Pan do University. So before we start the session, some introduction regarding regenerative therapy in pain medicine. What we know about regenerative therapy is mainly uh, prolotherapy and upcoming later stage plasma therapy. But uh, to start with regenerative therapy, uh, historically it has started long back. In 1930s, it was started and it kept on going, but the evidences which was accumulated was not enough for us to go ahead with regenerative therapy alone for most of the uh, conditions. Now, the musculoskeletal injuries uh, are the most common cause of severe long term pain, and often the psychological status and social interaction and employment they are more associated with all this. But what procedure we do are more, we are more concerned about the spinal procedures. But uh, the musculoskeletal injuries are also a major portion of the chronic pain which is uh, overlooked and uh, uh, subsequently which has more consequences like psychological, social and uh, uh, sick leave, all those things. Now regenerative medicine is a developing field with the goal of inciting repair and replacement of pathological Stem cells are coming into play. Now, in this session, uh, the types of regenerative therapy, regenerative therapy like prototherapy, platelet rich plasma, and mesenchymal stem cell therapy, we will be discussing. Uh, the evidences uh, will be uh, dealt by the speakers as well as the panelists. Uh, sir, uh, we can ask for the speakers. Can I request Gaurav Gayam to come over? Sorry, can you request Dr. Moina Gupta to come over to speak about platelet rich plasma and its application and the evidences? Thank you so much, sir. Uh, good, good morning, everyone. Uh, my topic today is uh, a regenerative therapy and the role of plasma, uh, platelet-rich plasma in pain management. management. Sorry, I am all drenched in the rain, so if I am trembling a little bit, just pay me for that. So what is PRP, platelet-rich plasma? Platelet-rich plasma is a fraction of blood which contains more number of platelets as compared to the whole blood. Typically for pain management, we say it is three to seven times the number of platelets which are found in the normal blood. It should be at least one million platelets per uh, microliter of plasma. The applications beside uh, pain management, it is used in alopecia, used in skin uh, conditions, musculoskeletal conditions and uh, pain. So what is, the, uh, what is the mechanism behind the use of PRP in pain management? So, the platelet contains certain growth factors which are contained within the granules of the platelets. There are two types of granules in the platelets, alpha and the dense granules. So these uh, platelet uh, factors, they have certain uh, roles, predefined roles in uh, regeneration of each individual component of the tissue. For example, platelet derived growth factor, the PDGF, it helps in repair of the blood vessels and collagen production. Vascular endothelial growth uh, factor, it helps in angiogenesis. The transforming growth factor beta, it, was, it helps all in angiogenesis as well as the regeneration of the endothelial cell. The epidermal growth factor or the epithelial growth factor, it helps in regeneration of the epithelial cells. And the fibroblast growth factor, it helps in regeneration or laying down of new collagen fibers. Not only the platelets, the plasma which is a part of platelet-rich plasma has got certain biological implications or the biological importance. As I have already explained to you, the platelet contains alpha and the dense granules. The alpha granules, 
they uh, give the growth factor which stimulate the chondrocyte proliferation. It helps in accumulation of regenerative cells and restoration of <coughs> collagen orientation. The dense granules have got ADP, calcium, serotonin, which promote the platelet aggregation and in turn release of the growth factor. The plasma has got a certain proteins, for example, vitronectin, fibronectin, and fibrin, which function as cell addition molecules, and it contains other bioactive molecules. So these proteins and bioactive molecules, they regulate the anti-inflammatory signal and equilibrate the angiogenesis, which is mediated by the growth factors. So what is the mechanism from the injection to the final result? So these are the five steps which are involved. The platelets, when you inject it at any particular site for any given condition, upon coagulation, the results and release of the growth factor They bind to the mesenchymal stem cells. They result in generation of the chondrocytes, osteoblasts, fibroblasts, endothelial cells, and epidermal cells. So that all the components of the tissues are regenerated. After that, there is an activation of cellular functions by means of transcription and translation. There is cellular reproduction, matrix formation, osteoid production, and collagen synthesis. <coughs> So there is an increase in evidence, but the evidence still is lacking for the role of plasma and uh, for the role of platelet-rich plasma in pain management. It is still not considered as the first-line management in any of the pain conditions. It is indicated mainly the evidence which is evolving is mainly for the osteoarthritis, as it leads to chondrocyte stimulation, healing of the cartilage, and modifies the pathophysiology. That is, the, it's a degenerative disease, so it helps in regeneration of the tissues of osteoarthritis. The mechanism of action is in accordance with other evolving therapies aimed at improving the cartilage healing. For example, matrix metalloprotein is an inhibitor, cytokinase inhibitors, stem cells. The steps which are included in regeneration include inflammation followed by proliferation and followed by remodeling of the let down collagen. So the main indications are osteoarthritis, particularly osteoarthritis knee, sacroiliac joint, for the management of tennis elbow, plantar fasciitis, rotator cuff, and low back pain. But most of these studies which are emerging for the role of PRP in these conditions, very few are randomized control trials. Even if they are randomized control trials, they have got certain selection biases. The inclusion and the exclusion criteria have not been defined appropriately. And we do, still do, do not have any systemic review or meta-analysis which shows that yes, the PRP has got a role in any of these conditions. So how do we prepare PRP and why should we know how to prepare a PRP? It's the function of a blood bank. It is very important to have good quality fresh PRP to have effective results. So each and every pain physician or any other clinician who is using PRP should have a basic understanding how it is prepared and what are the features of a good quality PRP. So it starts with taking up of autologous blood. Usually, for 4 to 6 ml of PRP, we take 35 to 40 ml of autologous blood from the anticubital vein. After we have taken the autologous blood, we add an anticoagulant to it so that so as to delay the coagulation process. Because the growth factors are released within 10 minutes of coagulation. So we would like to delay the coagulation. Degranulation. Uh, so ideally, procedure to be conducted immediately after PRP preparation to maximize the efficacy of growth factor usage. Because there is a very short time, 10 minutes, in which the growth factors will be released. So as soon as you have collected the PRP, as soon as the PRP is prepared, one should carry the procedure. So these are the steps in PRP preparation. We take the autologous blood, we add 5 ml of uh, anticoagulant, this is for 40 ml of blood. The 1 ml is sent for CBC. The first centrifuge is done at 1600 RPM for 15 minutes for the separation of the erythrocytes. This is followed by a second centrifuge cycle of 2800 RPM for 7 minutes so as to concentrate the platelets. The platelet quantification and qualification is done by an analyzer. 
So this is the topmost layer. After the second layer of, after the second process of centrifugation, the topmost layer that you obtain is the PRP. After that is the buffy coat which is rich in leukocytes and followed by the RBCs. That's why the first centrifuge it separated the RBCs to the bottom of the test tube. So this is the whole step. You take the autologous blood, you centrifuge it, you get the PRP, you determine the quality and quantity of the PRP and then you inject it. This is for the sacroiliac. Now the injection technique. Like any other injection technique, sterile prepping and draping is the utmost important. You give an analgesic, one to two hours depending on which analgesic you are preferring before the procedure. You can give do a local anesthetic infiltration, but avoid mixing local anesthetic with PRP. It changes the pH and destroys the chondro, uh, and destroys the and is toxic to the chondrocytes. You inject the intraarticular liquid PRP using a 22 gauge sterile needle. This is followed by a high test of 15 to 20 minutes, followed by you ask the patient to actively flex and extend the knee so as to allow the spreading of the liquid PRP before conversion to gel. So what are the post-procedure recommendations? It's an in injection, so there might be a post-procedure injection pain. You advise cold compressors, acetaminophen and tramadol for pain. Avoid insects and steroids which might hamper the first phase of healing process, that is the inflammation. Have a mild, ask the patients to have mild to moderate activity, increasing as tolerated, and physiotherapy and, active, uh, and modification of uh, activities of daily living to continue. So what is the appropriate regimen? How many cycles, at what intervals to give? As I already told you, no systemic review is there. We have not very good quality RCTs which are coming up. So there is no standard consensus guideline. Different authors have used different regimes and shown that yes, it is effective as compared to intraarticular steroid injection, intraarticular hyaluronic acid. Usually two to three injections at two to six intervals. Different studies show variable degree of benefit on pain, stiffness, quality of life, functional capacity. There is a study which shows greater pain reduction, longer effects compared to hyaluronic acid, but again I said the sample size was very low. What are the contraindications? Low platelet count, dysfunctional platelets and clotting. Platelets are the main working force there. So anything, any dysfunction of the quantity or the quality of the platelets, it's, it becomes a contraindication for the procedure. Consistent use of insects within 48 hours of PRP procedure because it will hamper with the inflammation which is the first step of healing process. Again, corticosteroid injection at the treatment site within two weeks or systemic corticosteroid within two weeks of PRP. Septicemia. Active infection on or cancer, an infection at the can injection site. I don't know why they have taken as a con cancer as the contraindication. Factors determining the output are an inverse relationship has been seen between age and the outcome of PRP. This may be explained by the reduced number of available active and alive cells in order to react with the growth factors. 